Hey, glad you can make it back again. Alright, we just got done in our previous video looking at how you graph stretches and reflections of y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. And now all we're going to do is apply that value or that uh, principle to stretching and reflecting y equals the tangent of x. Alright, you're going to see it's a very easy thing to follow if you understood all the stretches that we've done before and the reflections that we've done before. Let's start with vertical stretches for tangent functions. And just like with sine and cosine, the way you affect the equation of a tangent function in order to stretch it vertically is you multiply the output of the tangent function, all right? Take the tangent of an angle, you multiply that output by some constant value a. So let's see what the effect is here because you can't use the word amplitude with tangent graphs like you do with sine and cosine graphs. We said with vertical stretches of, of those things affected the amplitude. But here, this doesn't have an amplitude because the lowest and highest values are negative infinity and positive infinity respectively. All right, so what I need to remind you of then is the pattern that occurs whenever you're working with y equals tangent x in terms of the where's the cycle and everything. What are the values that we actually graph? And remember, we made the cycle from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Um, that's where two vertical asymptotes are and you get a complete cycle of values in between there. And specifically, we ended up using three values in between those two asymptotes in order to make the graph. We used the tangent of negative pi over 2, which is negative 1. We used the tangent of 0, which I call the mid-value, but it's 0. And, you know, unless we're worried about translations anyway. And then we used the tangent of positive pi over 2, which is equal to 1. All right, then we get to that undefined. Well, what happens then if instead of just the tangent of negative pi over 2, we have a times the tangent of negative pi over 2? Well, hopefully a fairly obvious thing happens there. Because the tangent of negative pi over 2 is equal to 1. And then 1 times a, sorry, tangent of negative pi over 2 is equal to negative 1. And then negative 1 times a is just opposite of a. Tangent of 0 is 0 and 0 times a is 0. The tangent of pi over 2 is positive 1, and positive 1 times a is a. All right, so whereas with the basic tangent function that you see graphs down here, the pattern goes, you have an undefined value at an intercept, uh, sorry, where the asymptote is, and then you go negative 1, 0, 1, and then another asymptote, right, negative 1, 0, 1, what we're going to do whenever we have an a, we're multiplying the tangent by something, is we're going to get this. You'll still have undefined values in the same places. You'll still have zero in the same place. But instead of negative one and positive one, what we're going to get is negative a and positive a. So in this case, where our a is three, our pattern is going to be that we get negative 3, 0, and 3 in between the asymptotes. All right, so now you're going to see the effect graphically that this vertical stretch factor is going to have. The asymptotes are not affected whenever you stretch vertically. What I do want to do to actually show you this is let's look between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 to begin. And instead of negative 1, 0, 1, we said we're going to get negative three, because we're going to get negative a, and a is three, we're going to get negative three, zero, and three. For our one-fourth of the way through the cycle, one-half of the way through the cycle, and three-fourths of the way through the cycle values. And so then that's just going to make this, whoops, that's not the thing I wanted to do, that's going to make this branch look more like that. Can you see where the stretching happens? And then we'll just do the same at every cycle, I will, instead of negative 1, 0, 1, go negative 3, 0, 3. Very easy, right? I'll go ahead and repeat the rest of it. There you go, there's the rest of that graph. All right, not so bad, right? Vertical stretches, fairly simple. Horizontal stretches will seem a little bit trickier, but let's talk about them anyway. I think you'll catch on just fine. A horizontal stretch is going to have an effect on something very measurable for um, a tangent graph. 
and it's going to be the same thing that it affected with the sine and cosine graph actually. What's going to happen when you have a horizontal stretch is the horizontal stretch is going to affect the period of the function. Now let me backtrack a little bit. Just as with sine and cosine, you can tell you've got a horizontal stretch when you've got some value b being multiplied by the input value. And what that does is that makes a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over b. And as that's the case, the period of a tangent function is going to change to this whenever you have a horizontal stretch. The period of y equals tangent bx is always going to be pi, the period of the normal tangent function, divided by whatever that value of b is. All right, there we go, very simple. Now I've again got the basic tangent graph already sketched here, and we're going to compare it then to this horizontal stretch that's created um, in the equation of y equals tangent of 1 half x. And the first thing that we need to do with that in order to make the graph effectively is we need to go ahead and figure out what is the period of that function. And we'll calculate the period of the function by doing pi divided by b, so pi divided by 1 half, and that happens to be 2 pi. Alright, so when you multiply the input value by 1 half, you ended up doubling the length of one cycle. Now this is going to affect our asymptotes, so I need you to pay spe special attention as I go ahead and show you what effect that has on the asymptotes. And that effect is this. If we double the length of the period, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doubling the distance between the vertical asymptotes as well. Now the central value is going to stay in the same place, but what's going to happen then is each asymptote is going to get twice as far away from the y-axis as what it originally was. So whereas you would normally, for a tangent function, have a vertical asymptote at negative pi over 2, whenever the period stretches to twice that, now the asymptote is going to occur at negative pi. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'll try to explain a little further why that's the case here in a moment. All right, and then we had an asymptote at pi over 2. Well, that's going to get stretched out to 2 pi, sorry, to pi, twice as far as it was before. Now, I'm realizing I gave you some misinformation a moment ago, nothing that was too crucial to the graphing of the tangent function, but it will be crucial to this explanation here, so I'm going to go back and fix it. I was telling you before that it was the tangent of negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 that were negative 1 and 1 respectively, but that's negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4, right? Sorry about that. Let me change all that over here as well. You guys are all sharp enough that you probably caught that on your own anyway, right? Okay. So my point now is that at negative pi over 2 and a positive pi over 2, that's where a tangent is typically undefined, right? So another way of looking at why the asymptotes here for tangent 1 half x have moved to negative pi and positive pi is if you think about what number would you multiply 1 half by in order to make this the tangent of negative pi over 2, well, it would be negative pi that you'd be multiplying that by, right? And that's relevant because the tangent of negative pi over 2 is undefined, so negative pi is going to be where this vertical asymptote is. And similarly, since we have the 1 half x, what would you have to multiply 1 half by in order to get your tangent to be the pi over 2? Well, you'd have to multiply it by pi, wouldn't you? 1 half times pi would do that. There you go. So that's why our vertical asymptotes are where they are. Now, this asymptote at 3 pi over 2 would also be shifted or stretched twice as far from the y-axis as it was, but that's going to go past um, 2 pi, so I'm not going to worry about that. Also, negative 3 pi over 2, when I double its distance, is going to be too far out for us to have to worry. So what's going to happen then is we're going to have just two cycles here, and actually it's going to be broken up into three parts, but we'll have two full cycles of the tangent function. Now, one more thing is going to be affected here in terms of how we go ahead and do the graph. We're still going to go ahead and do the negative 1, 0, 1 pattern, right? We don't have a vertical stretch, so we're not going to use A's, or our A is 1, you could say. We're going to do the negative 1, 0, 1 pattern, but you've got to make sure that you're going one-fourth of the way through the cycle to get the negative 1, halfway through the cycle to get the 0, and three-fourths of the way through the cycle to get the positive 1. So, Let's look in between, oh, we're graphing in red here, so look between the red vertical asymptotes here. A fourth of the way from negative pi to positive pi is at negative pi over 2, and at that point we're going to have our negative 1. 
then halfway along the cycle is going to be on the y-axis, it turns out here. That's where we're going to get our zero. And then three-fourths of the way from this asymptote to that asymptote is going to be right here at pi over 2. And that's where we'll get our 1. And you can see how we just got a wider version of the same graph, correct? Okay, then for the next cycle, one-fourth of the way from this vertical asymptote to the next would be at 3 pi over 2. So we'll put our negative 1. Then we'll have our halfway point at 2 pi. And that's all we're graphing is between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. So we'll be done with this branch at that point. And then we'll get the kind of the other half of that cycle, so to speak, over here. At negative 2 pi, you would be halfway through a cycle. At negative 3 pi over 2, you'd be three-fourths of the way through a cycle. So there's your positive 1. All right. So that's a horizontal stretch of a tangent function. Now let's put those two pieces together along with one other, one other thing. We may as well look at reflections in horizontal lines while we're here. And a reflection in a horizontal line, as it happened with sine and cosine functions, it happens when a is less than 0. And really all we need to do to, to be able to graph a reflection um, effectively is know how the pattern changes. And it's a very simple change. Um, instead of going undefined and then negative a, 0, a, undefined, what's going to happen is that you're still going to start off with an undefined value, but then we're going to get positive a, 0, negative a, undefined. All right, you're going to see the effect that that has. The tangent graphs, instead of going up from left to right, are going to go down from left to right instead. And you'll see how that works out. So, Let's go ahead and graph y equals negative 5 halves tangent 2x. And let's talk a couple of things here. First of all, let's talk about what the pattern is going to be. And we can get that directly from what I just told you up, what I just told you up there. Since a is negative 5 halves, we're going to get 0. All right, and it was negative 5 halves, so we're using this pattern here. We're going to get 0 and then negative 5, sorry. Let me amend my pattern to make it work a little bit better. Let's put absolute value signs around there. All right. So we'll, the absolute value of A would be 5 halves, right? That's going to go here. We do want these values to decrease as we go from left to right. All right, got it. Undefined, 5 halves, 0, negative 5 halves, undefined. Alright, now the second thing we need to talk about is what is the period and where are the asymptotes going to be. So, we know that we calculate the period by dividing pi, the usual period for tangent, by b, and b in this case is 2, so we're going to get pi over 2 for the period. And what that means then is that we've basically cut the length of a cycle in half, if you will. So instead of asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, we're going to get asymptotes at negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4. Now let me go ahead and graph the cycle that's going to happen between those two asymptotes, and then we can just repeat the pattern to the left and to the right in order to make the rest of the graph. So one-fourth of the way, we're going to get to 5 halves, so 2 and a half would occur right here. Okay, and then halfway through the pattern, we're going to be at zero, so that's there. And then three-fourths of the way through the cycle, we're going to get to negative two and a half. So here's that first branch. You see how it's going down to the right? That was a new thing. That was our reflection in a horizontal line. And now the rest of the branches are really easy to make because you see how far apart the asymptotes are supposed to be. So now you just make the next asymptote two grid lines over, the next one two grid lines over and so forth, don't go past 2 pi, and do the same thing going off to the left. Here are the asymptotes where they should be located. And then you can just keep repeating that same pattern that we did, the one-fourth of the way, the one-half of the way, the three-fourths of the way through the cycle, and you'll keep making all of the branches like so until you finally end up with this for your graph.
that's it. It's something that you look super smart when you're able to pull it off, right? Who in the world thinks they can understand how to make a graph like this? But I believe that you can at this point. All right. Thanks for your hard work on this. Let's keep plugging away and trying to understand these graphs. We've got one more thing to do, and that's to try to put translations and stretches and reflections all together in the same same graph. All right, so we'll be doing that over the next video or two. Um, well, again, thanks. See you guys.